secret diary that doesn't exist. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Sarah Dowie. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, if this is a government that has hit the ground running, I'm not sure what alternate reality we are living in. But certainly, we should be talking about transparency and open government. Absolutely, especially after the answers that the Associate Minister for Open Government just gave. Open government, we've been lectured on this for the past three, nine years while we were over that side of the House, New Zealand Labour, New Zealand First and New Zealand Greens lectured us on the importance of the Official Information Act. Line, chapter, verse, on we go. Lectured us on the importance of using the appropriateness of urgency. Lectured us on how the Official Information Act is so integral to good government. And what do we see now? A secret agenda hidden away that goes to the heart of how this government is going to be run. Sets out the modus operandi of what they are going to do. And so often, when we were over that side of the house we were lectured on, say what you mean, do what you say. But what has this government done? They've hidden behind their documents and done flip-flops. Flip -flops. No wonder that the leader of the opposition called them a circus. Troop. Absolutely, we've seen flip-flop, we've seen tightrope artists, we've seen contortionists as they've weaved their way through promises made and backtrack absolutely. So it's no wonder that we are questioning them about their openness and their transparency because really I don't think that they mean it at all. And what does this mean for the regions? Well, there's been so many promises out there about policies but what are the ramifications? There's been no thought that's gone into it. We have had claims about immigration, that immigration is going to be cut 20 to, to 60,000. But what does that actually mean? Who are these people that are going to be cut from migration? And let's, let's talk about Southland and our regional strategy, because New Zealand First has been a, a, a party that stood up and talked about how important regional development is. But on the flip side, it's talking about cutting immigration. So where is some of the region's workforce going to come from? There's no transparency around that policy. It's just a number that's going to be cut off. Oh, but look there, there's a backflip by the minister because we're not concerned with numbers anymore. Well, let's be up front. What's in that document? What's in that dossier? Come forward and let us know so that people like in Southland or in Taranaki can plan for the future. Just the other day, I was visiting a constituent Five jobs for electricians available. Five jobs available that he could hire straight away. Where are those people going to come from? Well, I've got news for New Zealand first. They're not going to come from Auckland, Wellington or Christchurch. We need skilled people. And moving on to the regional development with the flip-flop and this $1 billion fund that Dr Evil keeps talking about, $1 billion, whether it's new funding or a mixture, how is that going to be applied? Well, our government, previous, put $2.4 million into our Swords project, the South and Regional Strategy, to attract 10,000 more people by 2025. Where's the consideration going into that? How does the $1 billion apply to that? We don't know. But we're going through policies and doing flip-flops and not being transparent about what it means. This is not a government that's hit the ground running. It's a government that's made a whole lot of promises in the election campaign and doesn't know how to deliver. They're not fit for government. They don't know how to be ministers. They don't know how to be good government uh, members. They don't know what the ramifications of their policies are. And let's move to tertiary of education, shall we, and this free fees scheme. If they understood regional development, they would have understood the SIT's free fees regime and the importance in our Southland regional strategy. But what's happened? We've just had a blanket policy with no consideration for what SIT is doing, except they did have an emergency meeting during campaign when they sent uh, Mr Andrew Little down there 
to have a bit of a, a chin wag with our CEO because he knew he was go getting into dangerous territory. So look, there is no thinking about the ramifications of these policies. No wonder they're doing flip-flops. No wonder we're questioning about transparency because they're not doing what they say and they're not clearly communicating it to the New Zealand public. No wonder the New Zealand public are confused and no wonder they're losing interest in this government pretty quick. Mark Patterson. Well, it's uh, a bit of a uh, rarity to be...